Okay, so we are going to start. Um, sorry for that delay. Last week, or uh, when we were, I forgot to mention this particular thing, the modulus. It's an it's one of the mathematical operators. I forgot to mention it. So I want to touch it today before we go on. Now it's it is called a modulus or modulo operator. Now what it does is that it is just like uh, the division sign, but this one rather than giving you or, or telling you the number of times a number goes into the other one, no, it is not so. It tells you what it, what what a, a rather does is that it tells you that if a number goes into this, the, this is the remainder. It brings out the remainder for you. The modulo operator uses the percentage symbol. So let's say that we have a number. Let me just let's see. Oh, number one equals to let's see four and then num two equals to two then i want to know if two can go into the num one can go into num sorry num two can go into num one that is if two can go into four and what will be the remainder so what i do what i'll do is i can say that answer Answer is equals to num one modulus num two. Now let's see what happens here. Let's print out our answer, and and so it's going to print zero for you today. I'm not using uh, a regular uh, this thing. Uh, Anaconda, I'm using PyCharm ID. Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yes, sir. I can hear you. Yeah, please, we can't see us. You can't see my screen. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Let me see. Oh, sorry, sorry. I was not sharing. Can you please see now? All right, so let me let me go all over again. So just as I was talking about the module operator, we've defined two variables, num1, num2, to hold the value 4 and 2. Now we want to find out the module operator. We want to find out uh, the number of, if num2 goes into num1, what will be the remainder? So we define this variable and define an answer like this. And then we print out. When you print out, Shift F10, it's going to give us zero. So you realize that it tells you that when it goes into this, it prints out the remainder for you. So the remainder is zero. Now let's see that this one. It's let's say three. And find out. Now. So the remainder is what one. You may want to, you may, be, you may be asked to write a code and ask, or maybe ask the users to enter a number. And you want only integers. Oh, sorry. You want only even numbers. You don't want an odd number. Your users want to enter any number. It's another way to, of controlling what of your users input into your system let's see let me define a variable called num1 and then i'll uh, ask int we explained about the ints the other time so i'm sure you guys remember so enter only even number So you've asked the user. 
Now, what you want to do is you want to check that if the user is really entering an even number. So you can bring an if statement. Then ask, check that if num1 modulus 2 is equal to, because if you want to get an even number, it means that the remainder should be 0. So if is equal to 0, then maybe you tell your user something. Let's see. This is an even number. Thank you. Let me run this and see. So let's enter 10. So good. So the system has seen that. It's the number the person has entered. Your user entered is 10. Now 2 will go into 10. There will be no remainder. So it tells you that, okay, this is a remainder. Assuming, let's run it again and see. It says, let's say 9. It didn't show anything. It means that this block of code could not be run. So in order to do that, let's bring another statement here and tell the user. Sorry. Please try again by ng an even number. Let me do it. Twenty one. Yes. So twenty one divided by two. There's surely going to be a remainder of one. So what do you do? You tell him that no, the person didn't divide, it didn't enter an even number. Of this, there's this one to the format. It's the format function. If you want to bring, sometimes you see a code and they write it like this. And they'll put the variable over here. It's because of the F this format function that is to format the the entry so number one so let's run it and see i gotta give a space over here so oh simple so uh, 98 so it says 90 thank you so to make it more usable you can see that is an even number right. so this is sorry this is not or this is an odd number so 70, 76 yes so it says 76 is an even number so it's perfect you want to run it again and that person comes and then enter and then 75 sorry 75 is an odd number so this is what we use the uh, what do you call the module operator for if um, if you want to find the let's see you want to divide something you know how many times it goes into it now let me use this one let me okay let's see Num two okay, let me ask the user to enter num two. So enter uh, 
second number now you can see that answer sorry this will be out of the loop equals to num1 divided by num2 and then answer one equals to let me copy this one you see the difference over here so let's run it oh no I do something wrong. Okay. Let me see. So Now, 58. Okay, now, now let me use a very simple number so that you can easily see it. Let's see, this is 10, 20, and then this one is 3. Oh, let me see. Okay, 3. Now, let's look here. This first one. The number one divided by number two that is 20 divided by 3 is giving us this 6.6 .6. now if you take the other one 30 divided by 20 divided by 3 it tells you that 20 will go 30 will, 3 will go into 20 it goes into it six times it doesn't output the number so they, these are the two different, the three different types of divisions that we want to use in your uh, your mass calculations. If you are using this one, if you want to get the number of times it goes into it, you use this one. If you want to know that if it divides it, if it divides it, what will be the answer? So you have this one, you have this one, and you also have the modulo. So that is the difference. Now today I want us to look at this uh, the loops now and in, uh, in Python there are two major loops that we use. We have the for loop and then we have also have the while loop. Now the for loop we used it when we were dealing with list it works on the collection of items and when you're using the for loops the for loops it keeps iterating on the collection the items one after the other one after the other until it gets to the last item in the list or in the collection when it gets there it ends it let me see that. Let me let's see. We have a, a, a list called names. John, James, Ford, Harrison, and then let's see. Now we have this one, but this collection, this is a list. If you want to use the for loop, the for loop is going to 
loop through our list one after the other and it, it it what it does is it, it goes into it and execute once and goes to the another one to so each of the items one by one so let's say for name in names so it should print name for us let's run this so now it took it and it kept it kept looping each of them one by one one after the other this is different from of a, a while loop what a while loop does is that it takes an argument or a condition and it keeps iterating it keeps iterating so long as a condition remains true you have your while loop to be looping now let me use paint right here maybe uh you you, are, you want to program you have been asked to write a, a game if you're writing a game what you do is that you don't just stop the program the game no you give the the players or the one playing the game a chance to end the game so they play the game it gets to a point you ask do you want to quit or do you want to continue they said they want to continue so as long as that condition remains true as long as that condition remains true they will always the game will always be playing now this is how the let me see let me see let me see that Now you are going to what you're going to do is that you set a condition for your loop and then you are going to find out that this is this is your your condition your condition you set your condition over here and then you exit the code over here or you exit the, the game over here now you write some block of uh, you have a block of statement over here it's going to check the condition whether it is yeah true or false or yes or no so this is yes this is false or this is true this is true this is false this is yes or this is no now the moment you give your input it's going to check the condition and find out is the condition true the moment it sees that the condition is true, it goes here. Then come in, execute this block of code over here. Then it comes back, it come and check. Is the condition true? If it is yes, it, same thing. But the moment the condition is not true, it means that it is false. So it comes this way straight then end the code uh, the execution of the code as long as the condition is true your code will keep executing now there is something we call uh, infinite loop and a while loop is an example of an infinite loop <coughs> excuse me the infinite loop what it means is that you are writing your code you set a starting point and you didn't tell it where it should end now it's going to loop it's going to loop it will continue looping 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 without stopping until either the code crashes or you press control c or whatever key you have to press 
to be able to stop the code from running. Let me do a simple listing of a while loop over here. Let's see that. Oh, I said, I set a counter and say, and when you are writing a while loop, you should always initialize it. The initialization is setting something, setting a variable that will monitor the flow. It will monitor as and when it should end or something. Let's say we are setting a counter over here. It could be any name and zero. Now, I write my while loop and say that while well, this counter is less than 5, print, sorry, let's see, it should print counter. Let me run this code and see. The code, you are having an infinite loop over here. We are having an infinite loop. So it keeps running. It keeps running. So I have to stop it. So this is, if you check, it keeps looping and it keeps printing the zero because that is where you set it. Zero, this counter, which is equal to zero, will always be less than five. It will always and always be less than five. And so in as long as it remains less than five, your code will keep running and it will loop. It will keep iterating, iterating, iterating forever until your system crashes. To avoid that, this is what you do. Let's say that I set my counter equals to zero. And loop, this is the while loop, is one of the way that you can use to, let's say, you want to count a number within a certain range. You use while loop to do that. It's a very good tool for that. So you can say that while our counter, it's less than five. <clears throat> now, what you are going to ask it to do is that it should print the counter for you. Then, after printing, tell it to add one to the counter. So you come and get counter plus one. Now, so when from here for the first time when it loops you are going to get zero so it will print zero now if you should loop again because it's still zero is still less than five it's, if it will loop again you get zero but this time it's going to add plus one to it it's going to loop and it will come to the counter over here it, now the counter is no more zero, it's now one. So it's going to add, going to make it one plus another one. So now here is one. Now you loop again, it becomes two, two. So it will keep looping, but this plus one. Is the same as I'm sure I spoke about it the other time. It's the same as this. Sorry. So if you see this one and you see the other one, it's the same thing. So let me go to my PyCharm now and see. So let's see my counter is equal to zero and i'm saying that so as long as the counter is less than five or okay six 
it should print my counter then after printing it it should always add one to it so long as it is less than five so you if you, you are writing a program and you want to count you want or you want to bring out a number between zero and five so you can use it this way so your counter plus equals to one let's run it and see so from here see that it starts from zero start looping looping so from zero to one and three one two three and four if you want it if you want five to be inclusive and make it less or equals to five so it's going to make five to be inclusive for you that is one very good way or means of using the, the loop or the while loop now sometimes let's say that you're writing the code for a, let's say a storehouse or a warehouse and you bring items now as they bring the items you want the people at the storehouse to keep entering the items as long as there's items in the there are items in the track always and always remember to initialize your loop so we can see that item name we are initializing it so you give it an empty an empty string now you come and see that as long as this is is someone asking a question someone asking a question okay let's see so So what is going to happen is you are asking you are telling the customer that as long as there is there are items in the track the person should keep on entering the item and you can decide to bring each time the person enters it he executes for him to show let's say apple so now apple has entered um, let's see what again. Let me spell it. Is that how they spell it? Banana. Anyway, beans. So, yeah. So what is happening is that this code keeps running it is still iterating because so long as you are telling it that so long as the person hasn't entered the word quit the item name is not equals to quit it should keep on so let's see let's see what happens if we enter quit so now if you check from here it kept on looping 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 until the user entered this quit then it stops over there so it could be the same as a game you write you have to write a, a code a game 
you've written your quotes, and then you are telling the person, as long as they are okay to play again, do you want to play again? They say yes, they will play again. As long as they agree to play again, then they will play again. Please, is, is anyone having a question? Or does anyone have a question? Should we proceed on? Okay, silence means consent. So, this is one way of letting the user decide when to end the, the code. And we have something we call a flag. There's, there's this flag. Uh, most programmers will know what a flag is. When you are writing a program, you set a flag and that, okay, this flag should be there. And you monitor that as long as the programs, or for a program to run, for the program or the code to run, this flag should remain true. So, you can be asked, let's say you want to write a, a code and find out. Let's, let's take the American Lottery, for example. What they do is they, they, they have countries that if they said you can't be part of or you can't register for uh, the American Lottery. And so let's see that. Let's set a flag over here. This country equals to true. So we are using the this one, the true, as a flag. So you come in, what you come and do is why is country that is what it means is that as long as a country is true, let me see message or Let's select your country. Now, okay, that is what you do. But since you are not using the select box, let's say enter your country. So now you come and check that okay the country that this guy entered is it this or that now let's see that if the user enters country name to be equals to a secret. This country will be equals to changes the flag to be false. Else, friends, country name. Let's see what happens. So, let's see Ghana. Togo, Ahimia, China, US, India, almost by you can say. So, what is happening is that the flag is still true, it remains true, and it's still true. So it is still looping, still looping. And then let's see that, let me go and enter, quit and see, good. So now, the moment you enter quit, now the flag has changed. 
from true to false. It has changed from true to false. And so what happens is it's going to end the program because we've entered quit. This condition is no more true because from the beginning of the code, we said we set it to be true. If you change it the other way, the other way around and write false over here, you come and put true over here. If you enter quit, this one will not be false. And so the, the, the program will not terminate. It will rather execute. Is anyone having a question or we move on? Okay, silence me consent. Yeah, I'm over there. Um, okay, I think I have a question. And my question is, so apart from quit, is there any other word or letter that would make the condition false? So yeah. let's say enter the name of a country. If I enter anything or any word which is not exactly the name of a country, would the condition be true or it will be false? It will be true. It, it can't be false unless you defined the name of a country. And then one simple way you can do is that you can decide to get a, the name of a country and then loop through it and you can even you can use the the in function so that it will check if it's not in there then it should bring you forth and also not necessarily quit you can use any other way like end you are defining it Either. Okay, thanks. All right, Gina. Yes, sir. All right, so um, let's see that you have, you have, you've been given uh, some kind of uh, words, or you, let's say you're a teacher. Good, let me take this example. And then what you are doing is that we are doing statistics. And so we are taking certain numbers from your, your students or marks from your students. And you are to find out the average. So what you can do is that you first you can first set a counter or initialization. It's not you can not necessarily a word counter, it can be any names, but let's since I'm used to counter and set it to zero. Or okay, let me change it to the initial value. Or it goes to zero or start any any number. Any variable that you are comfortable with, then zero. Now, you what you want to do is you want to, to calculate the mean or the average. You need total number divided by the, uh, how do you call it? Statistical word and camera mechanism. You take the sum. Of the numbers divided by the total number of what? So let's say that, you know, let's see, these are sum. Sum is a keyword, so you can use sum of max. And then let's initialize it to say zero because zero, it doesn't mean nothing, anything is there. And then let's ask for our max. And then let's initialize it to be, let's say, zero. Now, what we are going to do is that 
we're going to check that as long as the mark their entry is greater or equals oh sorry is greater or equals to zero then what you want it to do is that you should take the number sorry the max so you convert it then input enter the mark now we want to calculate the average whatever I'm wrong something is wrong okay all right so now when you take the max what do you do the first max what would you, would you do with it you have to go and add it to the total so you come to sorry some sum of max then you add it to you add the max to it are you okay then you want because you need to know the number of times that that person will be entering the number so you set this one add one to it so when you enter the first number that is one the second number two third number three so this counter will be adding to this oh sorry start number So this number, the first one, we're going to add to this one. From zero, it will be two. And then it goes back. Do it again, loop. It will be three. It will continue until you uh, it ends. Now, let's see that. Let me print. Oh, let me print. Oh. No. Mass for moment formula. How do you calculate average? Let's go to the the total. Sum of the number of items involved, or the number of uh, yeah. So divided so to total. Sum of all the numbers and you divided by the total Tut number of items. Okay. Oh. So. Divided by uh, total. <clears throat> Sorry. Are we correct? From the code over here. <coughs> Sorry. So this is going to be the sum divided by the start number. So because yes, so the start, start number, number, the number yes, so it's going to be the start number. Then let's print and use the format function to format it. The average is so let's run it and see. So now it's going it will keep asking for the number so as long as we are saying that as long as it is greater or equals to zero so you can't even enter zero if you enter zero it will take it so let's see enters negative one the average it's zero point zero hi my phone where did my bro Eh, much for more my bro. You need help me. Please let's look at it. Let let's look at it again. This the mean should be equal to the sum of max. So this one. Well, oh 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 oh. 
Can you see the problem? Can anyone see the problem? Hello. Hello. Uh, there is no equal sign. Good, uh, good, good, good. So, I don't know if that's correct. I saw, but I don't that is the problem. That is the problem. That is the problem. So, so let's enter negative one and see. Good. Because ah, you didn't code funny. So what happens is that we take the mark, and we are saying that as long as because a student can get zero, not necessarily. Uh, one or something student can get zero so what what you are saying is that as long as the mark is greater or equals to zero now it should keep asking so if it takes the first max so this is the loop condition and over here this is the block of statement or the loop statement or the loop body or some will call it the body of the loop. And this is our condition over here. Now, we are seeing that as long as the max is greater or equals to zero, it should take the mark from the student. So you take the mark. Now, when you take the mark, take a, 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 this is how we do it. I remember in the uh, High school, J, no, JHS rather. Where is my print? This is how we do it. So, we draw a box. We draw a box like this. Then. So, you have Let's say L class test, whatever it is, assignment, or we, we used to call it homework, uh, exercise one, exams, total max. So what we are doing is we are taking all this value here. One, two, three, four, five. So we are taking it as long as the student hasn't finished or the person hasn't finished entry. You keep taking it so now when you take it you take over here this is what is what is happening you take the first mark then you go and put it over here you can refill this one then it goes back and loop so this is the this is going to give us it let's say the sum mark it goes it can put fill this one Fill this one, fill this one. So this one goes, get the max, come and put it over here. It goes to another one. And this counter or the starting number will increase because it's going to loop again. Each time the code is looped, the counter will as it will always increase. Each time a key it loops. If you forget to increase this. The co your co you get an infinite code. Your system is likely to crash. So this is one simple way of using the uh, what do you call it, the the loop. One 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 very very simple example, and you use this one more often when uh, you're writing a game or something. A, cool, a, a program that you want the users to always to keep on doing it, keep on doing it, keep on doing it until a condition is met. Now, in loop, we have uh, two other keywords that we use, or I don't know if it's a function or a method the break statement and then the continuous statement. You have the break and continue statement. Now, what happens is that 
these two are the ones that are going to direct you how your code is being run or how you run your your code now let's see let's see take the break for example and do learn by example and say country let's go back to that our country and set a flag for it so country is equal to true now we are come to ask what is country So what it what it means is that whilst the country is still true, its country is, is true, then you come and ask him country name. Sorry. Imp enter your so it takes it now you want to disqualify some people so you can ask that if it's country no sorry if country name because it's equal to let's say Nigeria because I'm not a blacklist from American visa You are bringing the break over here. Else, you tell it so country name. Qualify to apply for. Let's see. So now, what this break is going to do is that, just as I told you, the break it directs or it controls the flow of your code or your or, or your program. Now. You are saying that you are telling the, the your code that in as much as it is country and it's true, you should keep on printing. You should print. But if it is not true, if the kind the person enters Nigeria, it this is an if condition, it's an if statement. We dealt with if statement, if else. And then nested if let me run this thing and Ghana. So China India. So now what is happening is that the condition still remains true. So your code will keeps running it keeps running it keeps running but you have a break over here so let's enter nigeria here and see what happened the moment you enter the nigeria you see that the, the program has ended it's ended over here because over here your condition you're saying that if the country is ghana it should break so what it means is that it should stop. Don't continue with the execution of the statement. Every st any statement that comes again, it should stop. It should not be executed. So you realize that this statement was not executed. This is break breaking the code over here. It breaks it over here so as long as this condition remains false your code will run it so if you check here i enter ghana 
America, China. So when I entered it, straight it came to execute as one because this condition was not fulfilled. This condition at first, the country is not equals to Nigeria, it is equals to Ghana, America, whatever. So that is one way you use uh, the break for. So the break allows you to determine when you want to end the code. Now, there is another one, which is the, the continue. As for the continue, you are telling it that, oh, as long as when, uh, okay, before I come to the continue, let me go to this thing. Let me go to this one. sorry so I want to use my while loop and my my list or a dictionary I'm sure you guys haven't forgotten dictionaries and while uh, and list example if you want to name a list so names equals to you use this sign then uh, let's see. Um, and this. James. We, we spoke about this, how to define a list. So this is a list. And we also spoke about dictionaries. So, my dictionary, we use this one. So, let's see, six. If you use it's not a string, so and I see that it's a six as a string. So C A C A C If you don't understand anything, can you tell me? So without with this I'm just going over what we did the other time. So if I want to print my my destiny my list just like this and it's going to print the list for me now if i want to use my while loop with my list or my dictionary let's see let's let's go a practical example you are a web administrator and so you've developed your website or your web application for your institution and then what you did is that you ask people to register and you later confirm their their login details before they are able to use the system it happens very often very often in institutions So what you do is that you take the list of the users. So let's create a list of users. Let's say these are the list of the users over here. So let me say these are unconfirmed. Sorry. Unconfirmed. Let me use users. <coughs> So these are unconfirmed users. 
and then let's create another one because you have let's say you are taking two sheets so you need the unconfirmed and then the confirmed so let's see this is confirmed users and then we give it an empty list now what you are going to do is that you come and check that as long as you, because you want to confirm these names you want to confirm them but you want to use the while loop because if you don't use the while loop and you want to go by the normal code you write you want to go by the normal way you it means that if you take on point you have to write a separate code for it you take this one and you have to write a separate code for Andrews, James, and your code. You at the end of the day, you just for one uh, simple thing. You have about so many lines of codes doing that thing for you. So in order to avoid that, you just pick, take your while list or your while condition, and you ask that. So long as this condition the name unconfirmed is true what you are going to do is that current user will be equals to Now, if you remember, we spoke about this pop when we are when we were dealing with a list. We, we said that the pop is used to delete or remove an item from the list, but it does it from here. So first in, last out. Is that it? This is first in. It becomes the last one to come out. You write this one. So it's going to start from here. That is uh, good. It's lethal. So last in, first out. Good. I waited 10. Now you are popping, you are removing this one from here and you are saving it over here. into a list then you can write a very simple statement and say that oh we are or let's say confirming or let me use verify verifying then what's the current user So it's going to verify the current user. Now, after verification, we want to save it over here so that we can get the list of our confirmed user. So we can use the same append. So our current confirm, sorry, confirm users dot append. Then what are we appending to it? We are appending this one because this is the user. Let's run it and see. So first it went into it, verifying John, which is the last, then verifying James, verifying this, verifying that. So if you are a web app, uh, web administrator, this is how you may want to do it to verify them. Then when you finish, you may decide to say that, oh, okay, uh, let's print to and save. The following have been verified. And then print a list over here. Over here, here it is an empty list. But when you print it over here, it is no more an empty list. So 
So you see how we you can use the the while statement to continue doing continue doing until you finish. And you can also use the while statement. Let's say uh, you want to do this thing. You want to develop a system for let's say voting. You can use the while statement to do that. Is there any question before you go to the dictionary? <clears throat> any question? Hello, are you guys there? Hey, we'll be on Samu. I'm not coming. Okay. All right. <clears throat> okay. So since no question then I I would like to proceed on. Now with the dictionary. We've not forgotten how we define dictionaries. Now, we want to, let's define a dictionary, let's say, uh, let's, let's, let's assume, let's take it that we want to conduct a pool, and so we want the voting to be active for uh, a certain period. Now, when you are conducting something like a pool, you need a dictionary because you need the key and then the value that is assigned to it. So let's define a dictionary and see. Oh, uh, let's see, candidate. Candidate, and then let's also set a flag for the pool. Uh, the pool. So let's see. 
voting active and then because we are setting a flag for it true and then when you, when you are dealing with votes you need a name and then you also need the either the response or the, the vote over here so now let's start and say that okay so long as the voting is, is active that the pool the voting hasn't closed you use the while loop and say while voting is active now our name the name then we ask the user to enter the name of the candidate so enter the name of your candidate so the user will take the name of the candidate now what we're going to do is that <coughs> sorry, sorry you want a response or the vote so uh, let's use or uh, so okay since it's a pool so the to vote so I did it then I didn't see now what you are going to do can it and then the name then we apply the votes to it so let's say that if uh, uh, let, me, let me see what do I, what do I say Oh, uh, <clears throat> mama again. Okay, let's see that. Oh, uh, okay. Let's ask the person. Vote again. Okay, so let's see. Uh, yes, ask him if the person wants to vote again. So let's check the answer. And I'm going to do and they So if if vote again is equals to no. If vote again is equal to no, then it means that this thing the flag should be this one should it should, it should be false. It should be false. Then it should stop the voting. Now, because it is a dictionary, we know how to go to a dictionary, and then we we set two variables, a key and a value for it. So let's say for i, l, n, in this candidate.
Let's see, let's print I and print N. And let's what is wrong? Invalid candidate equals to sorry. So it's an empty dictionary because we are dealing with the dictionary. So, so uh, who should I vote for? Let's see. Or Bravo. Do you want to vote again? No. What is wrong? Input for n. Oh, too many values to unpack. Wow. <coughs> Hello, are you there? Then I'm with Dad now. Oh. Yes, we are here. Okay, do you know where is the error coming from? Which one? This is an error. I can't see what I can <coughs> see your screen, like what you are sharing. I've not seen what you are doing for some time now. Oh, really? No, I can't see oh, 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 it's true. Can you see now? Yes, sir. Okay, let me run it again and see. So, yes. No. Good. Can you see the error? This is the error. Hi there, can you see? Hello? Oh, sh Internet. <laughs> 